A lot of, of biodiversity science right, aims to understand uh, why is there a lot of species in places and less in others. And, and for decades, we've mainly focused on uh, the importance of what we call ecological processes. So things that are happening now, like uh, current climate. Uh, but what we've only started to realize more recently is that uh, evolution also plays an important role. Uh, and so also the history of our planet has a huge impact on, on uh, how biodiversity looks today. And so our map was a, a first step in, in this direction of understanding the role of evolution and history in shaping biological diversity. So here we have uh, Google Earth, which allows us to uh, visualize planet Earth. And uh, we're going to go here and click on Realms. And uh, all of a sudden, you see uh, the biogeographic map of, of the world's animals appearing. And uh, the colors are uh, indicating the uh, level of, uh, of differentiation in terms of the uh, fauna of the animals that you find in different regions. So two regions that have similar colors are regions that have similar species and families of animals, whereas regions that have different colors uh, are regions that differ a lot in terms of the family that uh, they enclose. Alfred Wallace was a, a naturalist that uh, lived at the same time as uh, Charles Darwin and was also uh, well known for the same reason as Charles Darwin, which was that uh, they co-discovered the theory of, uh, of evolution through natural selection, except that Charles Darwin got more attention. Uh, but Alfred Wallace had another major contribution. He, uh, he uh, came up with this uh, first widely recognized map of the biogeographic regions of the world, which was an attempt to summarize knowledge of his time on the distribution of animal on our planet. It's impressive to see that uh, Wallace's map was pretty close to what we're finding today, even though he had very limited knowledge on uh, the distribution of species. Now we are coming back uh, with uh, fresh information, decades of data compilation and information about the DNA. And using this DNA, we can uh, build evolutionary trees that depict relationship among species. And this allows us to come up with a map that is uh, more sound and um, uh, also gives new insight into the uh, mechanism that are responsible for generating biological diversity. We identified 11 biogeographic realms. Uh, Alfred Wallace, in comparison, only had six. And out of our 11 realms, Three of them had never been recognized before. The first one is the Panamanian here in Central America. Uh, the second one is the Sino-Japanese one that includes most of China and Japan. And the last one is the Oceanian one, which includes New Guinea and most of the Pacific Islands is uh, the third one. Now, it is uh, information derived from uh, DNA that allowed us to refine our maps and uh, delineate these new realms. A lot of the data comes from DNA that was sequenced from uh, museum specimen and from people going in uh, expedition in the most remote places of the world, really, and coming back and, uh, with specimen to, to sequence. This map shows what we call evolutionary uniqueness. And the darker the color, the more evolutionary unique a region is, and the lighter is the color, the less unique. And by uh, evolutionary uniqueness, what we mean is that uh, these places enclose uh, families of animals that are not found anywhere else on the, on the planet. So Australia is a good example of that, which is why it's dark red. This indicates that it is a, it is a very evolutionary unique part of the world, meaning that there are parts of the evolutionary tree of animals that is very well represented there, but uh, pretty much absent from everywhere else on the planet. Whereas the, uh, the light yellow uh, indicate places where uh, families that are found there are somewhat cosmopolitan, meaning uh, these animals are found in many other places on the planet. Our approach is allowing us to identify parts of the world uh, that have entire branches of the evolutionary tree um, that if they were to be lost, we would uh, lose millions of years of the, our natural history.